Okay, we're live. Give me just a second to wait on the system here. And get everybody moved over into our session. Just a second. Wait on the number to go up. Make sure we've got everyone. I think we do now. All right. Uh, great. So, yes, marching onward. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for being with us. Uh, the now fourth talk of the day, fourth of, fourth of five. Um, have the distinct pleasure to, uh, to introduce uh, Nicola Bertoldi, who's, just, uh, who's now uh, uh, just started at, uh, at uh, UCAM, as well as on, on a, a postdoc with, uh, with uh, Christophe Malater uh, there at the, at the CIRS group at, at, at UCAM, and also who did some of this work, uh, I know as well, at the ESPST in, uh, in, in Paris. So uh, without further ado, yeah, let me turn it over. So uh, I'll be talking with us today on From the Archive to a Computational Conceptual Map, a Distant Reading of Biometrica. So please, Nicola. Thank you, Charles. Um, thank you, Luca, for organizing this. And thank you to you all for uh, taking the time to listen to me. Uh, unfortunately, I, I fear that my talk was, uh, will not be as marvelous as uh, some of those uh, that preceded that preceded uh, mine, because I'm going to uh, present you a very incorrect idea, uh, which is uh, the project, uh, the research project I'm uh, um, currently working on here in uh, Montreal uh, under the supervision of Christophe Mater. So um, this uh, uh, project deals uh, with the <clears throat> the analysis of uh, uh, the archive of an important scholarly journal, uh, the journal Biometrica, uh, which uh, uh, was founded in order to foster the study and uh, and more generally the organization of uh, a new um, field of uh, um, of knowledge. In, in more precisely, the field of biometry, the application of uh, statistical methods to the study of uh, different uh, uh, biological phenomena with uh, a keen eye on variation. In this talk, I'm going to uh, present a, a brief outline of uh, my research project, and then I'm going to give you some background uh, as to uh, why biometrica uh, matters, in, in my opinion. So as for uh, the outline uh, uh, of the project, uh, as, uh, as it is reflected in the title of my talk, my idea, uh, which sprang from uh, the PhD thesis that I, uh, uh, that I wrote and defended in Paris, is to uh, try to uh, adopt uh, an approach to the study of uh, this, uh, this, this particular uh, scientific community, uh, which, is the commu which was the community of the biometricians, by uh, taking uh, an approach that uh, could be uh, well, that could be described as a distant reading of uh, uh, biometrica and of its archive. I, I, I took this uh, formula from uh, Franco Moretti and uh, by distant reading I mean uh, the, ser the, the search for uh, uh, hidden structures uh, within uh, a corpus, in particular in, in this case within the archive of bio biometrica, which uh, uh, could be used not only uh, in order to understand uh, how the, the intellectual field of uh, biometry was uh, structured, but also uh, to understand how the community that uh, uh, was active around uh, the, uh, this uh, journal was uh, uh, itself uh, uh, structured. So Biometrica uh, uh, was founded in uh, uh, 1901. And uh, for my uh, research project, I, uh, I'm working on uh, its archive 
uh, from uh, its inception until uh, 2013. It's a relatively small corpus, uh, which encompasses uh, 100 uh, volumes, 296 issues, and a total of uh, some total of uh, 7,678 articles. However, it's uh, a corpus that uh, uh, it, that uh, leads uh, to can lead to some uh, very interesting avenues of research because it's uh, uh, relatively uh, well. Uh, well organized, annotated, and uh, OCR'd, and it's ready to be explored. And uh, also, uh, in its uh, size, uh, notwithstanding, it's a, a corpus that uh, uh, encompasses a very large uh, um, range of subjects and uh, of uh, research topics, which mirrors the uh, the, the way in which uh, uh, the community of the biometrician evolved and transformed into uh, well what we could uh, uh, what we could call what we could call modern uh, statistics modern applied statistics. However, how does uh, this uh, corpus uh, look like? In this moment, I'm working on uh, metadata that uh, uh, as already that, that uh, I uh, that I was able to acquire uh, through my supervisor uh, from uh, the uh, site the website JSTAR and as you can see those uh, uh, those uh, metadata I'm working on uh, take the shape of uh, take the form of uh, XML files with uh, uh, with a uh, sort of a, a tree-like uh, structure, and different in this uh, within this structure, I'm uh, looking at the different blocks that uh, uh, make up those uh, those trees in order to extract uh, relevant information. Uh, with respect to the, the journal or uh, with respect to some particular articles. For instance, uh, I'm uh, looking at titles, uh, at uh, authors, and etc., uh, etc. Et and in this moment, I'm mainly trying to constitute a data frame with, uh, uh, with the aim of uh, uh, transforming this uh, uh, archive into a uh, structure that could lend itself to further, further analysis. Take an even closer look. Here you can, uh, you can see how the, the uh, metadata are organized. And here is the code that I'm, I'm writing in order to uh, in order to, to generate the the, uh, the the data frame. I'm at uh, unfortunately it's uh, as as I as I was saying uh, at the beginning of the talk. It's uh, a very inchoate project, and I'm just at the first uh, uh, stage. I'm trying to uh, organize uh, the information that I'm uh, extracting from uh, the uh, metadata. And here, here are some other uh, part of the, of the code. I'm not a professional programmer, so this is uh, a bit of a challenge for me. And uh, uh, but I'm, I'm uh, well, I'd say that uh, the fact of uh, uh, trying to uh, write a code in order to uh, store and organize the information in a, in a data frame uh, uh, is giving me the opportunity to uh, reflect uh, on, the, on the way in which uh, uh, I ap approach uh, uh, Texts uh, as a as a researcher. 
here some more some more detail. So uh, those are the, the those are these those are the kinds of uh, uh, items of information that I'm interested in, in this moment, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, develop uh, the code uh, further as uh, as my uh, dive into the the, uh, the archive. Uh, uh, progresses. So, uh, to go back to the second part, why biometrica? So, uh, as I was saying uh, previously, Biometrica, the, 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 the history of this uh, journal is uh, uh, tightly related to uh, a, major, a major event in uh, the history of, uh, uh, of the life sciences, and more precisely to the uh, well-known controversy uh, between uh, uh, the Mendelians and the biometricians. The, uh, the Mendelians were uh, uh, biologists that uh, uh, rallied, rallied behind uh, experimental geneticist uh, William Bateson at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, who had concluded that the results uh, of uh, uh, Gregor Mendel's experiments on the hybridization of different variants of a given uh, character supported the hypothesis of discontinuous uh, variation. On the contrary, uh, the biometricians uh, were largely uh, Darwinian and uh, um, they aimed to show that uh, the application of the modern method of statistics to the study of variation could vindicate uh, the um, uh, Darwin's uh, insights into uh, the uh, genesis of uh, variations and uh, the, the uh, process of evolution by natural selection as the accumulation of the continuous uh, small uh, variations. So uh, this uh, uh, controversy was settled in uh, 1918, was officially settled, let's say, in 1918, by the uh, when uh, uh, R. A. Uh, Fisher published a seminal paper, a seminal paper on the correlation between uh, relatives on the supposition of Mendelian inheritance, which uh, uh, sh which proved uh, uh, the uh, um, the uh, the consistency of uh, Mendelism with uh, the with Darwin's hypothesis of natural selection. However. The, uh, the, uh, the seeds of the reconciliation between those two opposing views were already present in uh, present works and even in uh, Mendel's original paper itself. That's why this, uh, this controversy has, uh, uh, con uh, has constituted a, a source of uh, uh, puzzle uh, of bewilderment for uh, historian, for scientists, historians, and philosophers of science, and it's precisely for these reasons that, for this reason, that David Hull uh, referred to this controversy as an inexplicable embarrassment. Uh, Biometrica played a fundamental role in uh, this, con this, con this controversy. It is precisely on the backdrop of the, or on the backdrop of the heated debates between uh, Pearson, uh, R. A. Pearson, uh, sorry, uh, Carl Pearson, uh, Raphael Waldon, and Francis Galton on one hand, and uh, uh, William Bateson on the other hand, that uh, the journal was founded in 1901 with a, with a twofold. Uh, objective. On the, one on the one hand, the journal's found founders were, who were precisely the foremost biometrician of, that, of the time, 
aim to foster the collection and the interpretation of statistical data in various fields of biology. On the other hand, they held a theoretical and perhaps even ideological commitment to statistics as a theoretical tool capable of settling, of, of settling scientific controversies as, uh, such as the one around the, ca the causal power of natural selection. As uh, As uh, uh, Carl Pearson own uh, son and uh, uh, biographer uh, noted, the, uh, the, the, the main aim of the biometricians was to transform uh, statistics in, uh, uh, in a branch of uh, uh, applied mathematics and to uh, apply this uh, new insight into the study of uh, uh, biology, uh, uh, and in particular to, bio, to, to the study of biological variation, in order to uh, in order to uh, uh, build a, a real science of uh, variation and of evolution. This view of uh, uh, the aims of biometry was indeed consistent with Carl Pearson's broader epistemological and ontological views. He regarded all, or all physiological hypotheses on hereditary as a subsidiary uh, to statistical laws and biometrical models. He considered the format to be, uh, to be completely atheoretical in nature. This view of modeling squared well with his personal epistemological and uh, metaphysical convictions, which could be brought in we could, uh, which could be broadly labeled as a form of scientific phenomenalism. In the Grammar of Science, uh, one of his uh, most important works, uh, Pearson argues that the only uh, true objective uh, uh, facts are phenomena, which, uh, which are uh, the things uh, qua constructed by the human faculties of perception and thought. More precisely, Pearson asserts uh, that what we call external objects are nothing but constructs that are comprised of two kinds of sense, of sense impressions. On the one hand, there are immediate sense impressions, which the body receives uh, uh, through, uh, through the senses. And on the other hand, there are the effects of past sense impressions that are stored in our memory and which are added to present impression through a process of physical association in order to produce a full-blown sensory experience. Such impressions are, properly speaking, the only objective constituents of reality. This is why, according to Pearson, the reality of a, th the reality of a thing depends upon the possibility of its occurring in a whole or part as a group of immediate sense impressions. Therefore, Pearson's regarded, uh, regarded thought as the process through which objects, objects are constructed in the mind, which is ultimately elicited by immediate sense impressions, yet proceeds by autonomously associating one memory with the following one. In other terms, uh, according to Pearson, the mind proceeds from direct and physical association of memory to indirect reflective and mental association of notions i.e. from percepts to concepts. It, uh, uh, it follows that uh, just as objects uh, qua percepts uh, only exist to the extent to which uh, they can be reduced whole, wholly or partly to groups uh, of immediate sense impressions, a concept can be deemed scientifically valid only if it is self-consistent self -self -consistent and deducible from the perception of the normal human being. Furthermore, just as the universal validity of, perception, of perceptions relies on the homogeneity of the perceptive faculties of all normally constituted human beings, all valid conceptual inferences are those which could, although not necessar necessarily would, would be drawn by every logical trained normal mind, 
if it were in possession of the conceptions upon which the inference has been based. This is why, according to Pearson, there could never be any universally valid knowledge without the existence of both a canon of normal perception and a canon of legitimate inference, which shall, en which shall, en shall en ensure that the outside world of phenomena, the processes of association and logical inference, as well as the inner world of store impressions and conceptions, must be practically the same for a normal human being. It is, this, it is precisely in those respects that person's view uh, fit uh, perfectly well in the, cat, in, the, in the category of scientific phenomenalism. On the one hand, he contending that a person contended that the only objectively existing things, and thus the only subject matters, uh, matter of knowledge, are phenomena qua constructs from sense impressions. On the other hand, he was also convinced that the objective existence of such, of such phenomena is only ensured by the canonical rules of perception, observation, experimentation, and reasoning that constitute precisely the grammar of science. Therefore, uh, the question, uh, well, the question arises, arises of knowing uh, in to which extent and uh, in uh, which way uh, those uh, uh, philosophical, epistemological uh, uh, commit, uh, commitments of uh, Pearson uh, in, had uh, an impact not only on uh, Pearson's research, but on the wider community of uh, uh, biometricians. And this is pre it's precisely uh, for, uh, uh, in order to answer a question like that, that uh, I, uh, uh, this, th th that I uh, took upon myself to uh, develop this project and to look into uh, Biometrica's archive in order to uh, try to uh, build a sort of a conceptual map uh, on the basis of the information that I uh, will be able to extract from um, uh, from the data that I'm, that, that I'm gathering. But uh, what is the for a conceptual map? I'm uh, using this, uh, uh, the, this concept in the same way as uh, uh, James uh, uh, Grissomer uh, defined, uh, defines it uh, in, uh, uh, his, uh, uh, in his works uh, on the, for the, the rational reconstruction of uh, uh, scientific theor theories, and in particular on the rational reconstruction of uh, uh, evolutionary biology and uh, uh, population genetics. In particular, uh, Grisemer has uh, uh, put forth uh, an, an approach uh, that he deemed uh, to be uh, uh, a pragmatic approach, which uh, uh, whose uh, the, the the aim of which is uh, uh, to identi identify precisely some uh, uh, conceptual uh, uh, maps uh, that uh, conceptual uh, charts and conceptual maps uh, as uh, 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 connection between uh, uh, conceptual notes that uh, underpins the way in which uh, uh, scientists present uh, their own theories as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, possible definition of theoretical structures, aiming, at, uh, uh, aiming to specify the, uh, the peculiarities of a particular kinds of system of objects to which uh, the theories uh, themselves uh, uh, are uh, uh, ultimately related. In other, word, in, in other words, uh, the definition, the, the, uh, the function of those definitions that are underpinned by uh, conceptual maps is to determine what uh, uh, might be called the empirical domain that is associated with the theory that uh, uh, a phil the, the philosopher aims to uh, rationally reconstruct. This, uh, uh, um, 
uh, this empirical domain is uh, uh, in turn uh, strictly re uh, tightly related to a conceptual domain which consists of the principles, the laws, the concepts, the models, and other elements that the, theor that the theory in question uh, relies uh, uh, on in order to explain the way in which uh, the objects that makes up uh, this uh, empirical domain uh, evolve and change uh, in time. In, 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 uh, in conclusion, my, uh, uh, one of the main objectives of my uh, project consists in uh, trying to bridge uh, the gap between uh, uh, the, empirical, uh, uh, the empirical domain of, uh, uh, of biometry and uh, uh, it, uh, the uh, conceptual uh, domain of this uh, uh, same uh, uh, science uh, by looking at the way in which uh, those two aspects uh, of, uh, uh, of biometry were articulated by the members of the, commun the scientific community of the biometricians. In order to do so, I, uh, I aim to, uh, I, I, uh, I intend to uh, analyze the, uh, the archive of uh, uh, Biometrica in order to extract from uh, this archive a, a conceptual map that could, uh, that, that, uh, uh, could possibly be uh, imagined to underpin uh, the whole presentation of uh, biometry as, uh, it, uh, uh, as it can be uh, understood by uh, reading, uh, reading uh, distantly, both distantly and uh, uh, approximately, uh, biometrica. So, uh, uh, before. Uh, uh, um, before leaving time to questions, I, want, I wanted to uh, thank uh, Philippe Unman, who uh, was my, who, who supervised my PhD thesis in Paris, and uh, Christophe Malater, who is my current supervisor and uh, uh, who helped me uh, get uh, the funding and the resources that uh, are necessary to my uh, to, to, to the development of uh, my project. And uh, I also wanted to thank you all for your time. Fantastic, thanks so much. Um, so, well, uh, some of you in the audience may or may not know that I also have worked on this exact same period of the history of biology. So I could talk about this for a very long time. I will, uh, I will, Start by. I'll start with a question while I while I wait on the uh, on the questions to arrive from from the chat. Um, so one thing that one thing that I'm that I'm interested in is, and this is a this is a, a hard question I, I know, but it's kind of a kind of a a broad worry that we might have about doing digital humanities type work in, in this period. And actually I'm very interested to see, we have, we have a couple of talks, yours and, and one coming up, uh, I forget if it's tomorrow or Thursday, where people are applying these methods to older data, to more difficult data. Um, you know, one of the, of course, it, 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 it's, it's lovely. We've seen just in the last few talks, uh, actually in the, in the talks so far in the conference, the kinds of processing you can do when you have very high quality inbound inbound data but i know it's much harder right to extract things like like citation networks and 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 whatnot from these from these much older uh these much older sources so i'm wondering um obviously i i, I anticipate that you're going to be thinking about about topic modeling but i'm wondering what kinds of just in general how are you thinking about surmounting that problem of of dealing with an old data set, uh, how how is that how is that sort of framing your thinking about the project? Because I think that's a 
that's a real interesting challenge for for those of us who don't want to look at who who want to want to look beyond or or, or behind uh, uh, the last uh, even even twenty years or so when our, since articles have been born digital. So I just wonder what your what your thoughts on on that that problem of of historical data might might look like. Well, I could just well, I could say that uh, there are two kinds of uh, uh, barriers. Uh, or more precisely, two kinds of uh, uh, challenges that uh, those kind, this kind, this kind of data uh, poses. On one hand, there is uh, the technological and practical challenge because uh, uh, it's necessary to uh, uh, have the the, uh, the time, uh, the technology, and also the manpower necessary to. Uh, treat those uh, data in particular when uh, uh, the documents in question are uh, photos or, or uh, of uh, old, or old books uh, or, or old articles. Uh, but there is also another uh, challenge that is particularly interesting and it's something I uh, came across uh, while working on uh, uh, the metadata, metadata from uh, uh, Biometrica, it's uh, the problem of uh, uh, structures, uh, in particular with respect to uh, the way in which uh, data uh, well are catalogued and are gathered. Uh, because, for instance, uh, uh, I realized that uh, uh, the, meta, the, the structure of the metadata uh, for biome Biometrica is not, consist not really consistent uh, across time, uh, which, uh, uh, for well, which forced me to look at a little bit closer to uh, the article I was uh, uh, I was trying to, to, to extract inform information from. So I'd say that uh, uh, the first uh, uh, challenge is the, the more obvious, but uh, the other one uh, should not be overlooked. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice point. Thanks. Um, a question coming in from uh, Eugenio Petrovich who asks, uh, yeah, could you tell us more about the conceptual map? So are you planning to generate it by quantitative or, or digital methods or by more classic close reading methods or, or maybe a combination of the two? How, does, how are you seeing that, that process? Uh, well, I'm just... Uh... I, I'm a sort of a neophyte in the in the, uh, in the field of uh, digital humanities, and my uh, intuition is that both approaches, uh, distant uh, reading and a close, closer reading, are uh, uh, are necessary to uh, and they they constitute uh, two uh, dialectical opposites uh, that uh, uh, are actually. Uh, both necessary in order to uh, really understand uh, uh, the dynamics and the structures behind uh, the documents. Um, at this stage of my research, I'm planning to start with uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, basic topic modeling uh, on the archive as, uh, as a whole from uh, 1901 uh, uh, up to 2013, maybe up to later issues. And one of the uh, problems I'm anticipating is consists in the fact that uh, um, the topics uh, I would probably identify, be able to identify, uh, well, uh, they risk to be not uh, as uh, informative as to uh, the, the real content of uh, uh, the, uh, the documents and as to the real structure of uh, the, uh, the conceptual map that I want to extract from uh, those documents. Because for instance, I'd like to be able to find a way to uh, identify different kinds of uh, uh, concepts uh, uh, that are more or less uh, uh, closely related to the empirical domain 
I, uh, I was referring to. And in particular, I'd like to discriminate between uh, mathematical models, uh, representation of uh, phenomena, uh, of uh, representation of uh, uh, data as a sort of intermediate uh, step between uh, uh, phenomena and uh, models in order to uh, uh, look into the way uh, in which uh, biometrician conceives of the relation between those three uh, uh, those well, th those three macro uh, macro areas uh, of uh, a possible conceptual domain of uh, conceptual field of biometry, and uh, by doing so, I also like to test uh, 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 well, let's say a null hypothesis, uh, which uh, uh, consists in. Uh, uh, positing that uh, Pearson had uh, uh, determining, uh, uh, wielded an important influence, uh, determining influence on the development of biometry, and therefore that uh, uh, Pearson's uh, epistemological uh, and uh, philosophical convictions should be reflected in uh, the way in which uh, biometry, in, in the presentation and the conceptual map of biometry that I uh, uh, that I'm anticipating I will be able to extract from uh, uh, Biometrica. Great, thanks. Um, I'll help myself to a to a historical uh, a, a more historical question. I just wanted to want to build on 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 something you just you just said. Um, I wonder how you're thinking about um, how to put this. Uh, yeah, this is a good way to say this. Sorry, I'm 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 coming up with this probably too quickly on the fly. But another thing that I think happens, and and this is this is related to these these questions about about the history, the the long scope of the history here. Um, another thing that I think probably happens over this period is not just the content of the articles changes. That is to say, the kinds of science that that gets done in a journal like this. But even the sort of social nature of what publishing in a journal is, what it means to be to be printing an article, uh, you know, you're starting not that far after the sort of birth of the contemporary journal system, and then running into the now today's you know hyper digitized, et cetera, H index powered, et cetera, et cetera, a very very different kind of not just not just scientific understanding, but I can say understanding of what it means to be to be publishing in a journal, understanding of what your editor does. Uh, brief, you know, I I know you know this, but but for people who don't, there there are, there are notes in the archives about uh, people would send papers to Pearson for publication in Biometrica, and he would say, "This is great. Uh, I'm absolutely happy to print this. I'm going to rewrite it for you, though, before we put it in the journal." And you're like, "Wait, this is not this is not what I thought. Science, you know, scientific publication did not mean exactly what uh, uh, scientific publication means today." So I I, I wonder. Obviously, that's a lot of close reading that has to happen behind behind that. But I think it'll be interesting to see how you can trace, how you can see that emerging. If that's a signal that you can see out the other side of, of the data in the project, and that could be applicable, right? Not just to the biometrica case, but to uh, sort of questions about scientific publishing more broadly. I think that's an interesting point. Uh, are you wondering about the? Uh, uh... The, the possibility of identifying, uh, identifying a sort of uh, some sort of Pearsonian style, uh, literary style, literary and conceptual style in uh, across papers. That, that might be one way that it would show up, but or that, but but that's really, I guess, what I mean is that's sort of one facet that I can think of 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 many right that might be visible in terms of a change mm -hmm. of what it meant to be writing a journal article and publishing a journal article over the over the scope of your of your project. That could be a neat kind of another kind of knowledge, another layer of knowledge that, that an analysis like yours could, could produce. Yeah, and Biometrica is very interesting from this point of view because, uh, well, we could say that uh, uh, at uh, its in inception, it was a, a militant uh, journal because uh, uh, Pearson was uh, uh, wary of uh, Bateson's influence uh, 
and uh, he, he feared that he would not be able to publish as he wanted in uh, other journals. Therefore, he he, well, he set up uh, this venture that was not only a publication but also a, a real act of, of uh, uh, well affirmation of uh, an idea of science. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it'll be very interesting. I'm really excited to see to see where the project goes. Um, I don't see any further questions. I'm going to do that thing that I do where I stall for a second to give uh, to give the uh, the tape delay a chance to catch up on the broadcast again. My my apologies. I am not used to working off of live. That's a bit of a weird uh, weird feeling, but. Failing that, we're very near to time in any event. So why don't I just thank you very much for uh, for this for this introduction to your project? I'm really excited to see uh, to see how it <laughs> unfolds, as you as you already know. So uh, so thanks a lot. And uh, with that, we'll be back in a little more than ten minutes for the last talk of the day. Uh, very soon now, let me take advantage of this of this brief moment. Very soon now, I will be posting. Uh, I'm going to go do it right now. I'm going to go update the conference website to post the link to the Zoom uh, that we'll all be headed for at uh, uh, 7.15 p.m. Uh, European time. Uh, I forgot to look up the translation of it into another time zone, but I'll be going to post that Zoom link very soon. So, so uh, eyes, uh, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, I'll see you guys back here in just a few minutes. Thanks again. Bye-bye.